After getting the main frame done, I'm ready to smooth the fillets. But first, it's time to braise the cable stops, guides, badges, and dropout plates to the frame. Then I'll get the head tube and bottom bracket shell reamed, faced, and chased. By modern standards, my cable routing is a bit unusual. I run all the cables along the top of the down tube. I often attach a gas tank or half frame bag to the top tube, and I prefer to have the water bottle cage on the seat tube, so that leaves the down tube the best choice for the cables. This routing is also simple and direct. The dropper cable goes down the middle of the down tube and then right up into the seat tube. The rear brake and derailleur cables are on their respective sides and then run along the top of the chainstays. The process is basically the same for all these frame parts. Get the spacing even, scratch the center line with a file, and mark its location with a punch. Once the layout is done, everything gets a shine with 80 grit emery cloth and wiped down with isopropyl, including the silver. I want to make sure there isn't any oxidation or contaminants on the surface of the brazing wire. Then everything gets a coating of flux and the guides get held in place with some Cobra frame building clamps. These are really great tools for holding small items on a tube. I highly recommend them. The chainstays get three guides on the drive side. I've used two guides here in the past and my foot ends up hitting the derailleur cable when I pedal. I think I'm finally getting better at silver brazing. Everything happens so much faster than with bronze, and I have the tendency to get things too hot. I've finally gotten used to getting the metal to temp, adding the silver, quickly flowing it with the flame, and then getting the torch out of there. It also helps a lot to turn my torch way down when I'm brazing the silver. The guide on the yoke is the trickiest. The yoke is so thick compared to the cable guide that it's hard to get them both to a similar temp without the guide being too hot or the yoke being too cold. But with a fair amount of preheating on the yoke arm, it actually went pretty smoothly.
Then I repeat the same process on the brake side, which only needs two guides. I recently switched up my brazing workspace. Up to now I've been sitting down, but I tried raising my park stand so I can stand up. I can move around the frame better, and with my welding table nearby, I have a place for all my brazing stuff. I also picked up a torch holder, so if I want to set my torch down for a second or two while it's still lit, I have a safe place for it. Another unusual thing about my cable routing is that I use cable stops. I like the fact that less housing means a better lever feel, and I can easily get slack in the system for maintenance. I typically use double or triple stops in the down tube, which means less brazing and less brazons to fixture to the frame. The process is similar for the head tube and serial number badges. Shine with 80 grit emery cloth, white with isopropyl, flux, and then braze. I use copper for the head tube and serial number badges because it's easy to bend and punch, and its melting point is over 600 degrees Fahrenheit above the melting point of the silver I'm using, so I don't have to worry about melting the badges. The silver I'm using is Fillet Pro from Cycle Design. The last silver brazing job on the list is the dropout reinforcements. I was a little concerned about how this was going to go, but they turned out pretty good. After I rinse all the flux off with some hot water, it's time to bring the frame to the bike shop to get the head tube reamed and faced, 
and the bottom bracket shell chased and faced. Someday I'll save up enough money to buy the headset and bottom bracket tools so I can do this myself, but until then, I've got a great local bike shop that can do the work for me. Thanks to everybody at Angry Catfish Bike Shop. The last task for this video is cleaning up the main triangle fillets. I start with a spiral roll on the Dremel, being careful to keep it only on the bronze. This smooths out most of the high spots on the fillet. On my first few frames, I did this by hand with a file, and not only does it take longer, but I think I'm actually more likely to cut into the steel tube with the file than with the Dremel. Next I use the handheld belt sander with a narrow quarter inch belt to smooth the edge of the fillet. I let the belt touch the steel tube, but only very lightly and briefly. I leave it on the actual tube long enough to remove the rust, and that's about it. I'm pretty paranoid about undercutting the joint, which is when you cut into the steel at the edge of the fillet, making the tube thinner. One thing I really like about this little belt sander is that I can bring the belt right up to the edge of the fillet without hitting the steel. I don't spend a bunch of time getting my fillet super smooth. It just isn't worth it for me. I approach my frame building from a utilitarian perspective, not an artistic one. This is especially true at the bottom bracket cluster, which is a ton of work to get smooth. And there it is. All the silver brazing is done, the head tube and bottom bracket shell are prepped for parts, and the fillets are as smooth as they're going to get. In the next video, I'll add frame saver to the inside of the tubes, prep it for painting, and then paint and cold blue the frame. If you want to see how the rest of the build goes, be sure and hit the like and subscribe button so you'll see the next video when it's published. If you're enjoying this video series, consider a super thanks. And if you haven't watched the other videos in the series, go check them out. Thanks for watching, take care, see you next time.